Saturday also we, or oh, Saturday you were there, yes. <laughs> and Sunday morning also. We did program in Bankhead. Okay, share the screen with me. Om Magyana Timaranda Syagyananjana Shalakaya Chakthurun Militanyena Tazmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shremati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschachya Desha Tarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Hevacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. All right, so we're reading mantra number 10. I'll chant it again. Anya Devahu Vidyaya, Anya Dahur Avidyaya, Iti Sushru Matiranam, and we're on uh, in the purport we're up to point number five one should learn to avoid duplicity in his dealings with others so when we deal with people, we want to be straightforward. We don't want to be duplicitous. We don't want to try to lie and cheat. We should be straightforward. It's important quality for a devotee. Number six, one should search out a bona fide spiritual master who can lead him gradually to the stage of spiritual realization. And one must submit himself to such a spiritual master, render him service, and ask relevant questions. So this is an important point. Everyone should have a spiritual master to help them to solve the problems of life. Uh, Lord Krishna himself had a spiritual master and he went and studied from Sandipani Muni along with Balaram, Krishna and Balaram together. They went and stayed in the ashram, Sandipani Muni ashram and learned everything from their guru. And they, they showed their gratitude to Sandipani Muni by bringing his dead son back from Yamaraj. And we see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also had a spiritual master. He went to Gaya and he took initiation from Ishwara Puri. And after his initiation, he became, he, he, he was very ecstatic. He awakened his, he, he, he became so full of love of Krishna. 
แต่ก็เหมือนกับพระองค์เจ้าเจตันยาก็เช่นกันพระองค์ก็ทรงเดินทางไปที่เกียแล้วก็เจอกับอิชรปุรีแล้วก็ท่านก็ได้รับการอุปสมบทแล้วหลังจากที่ท่านได้รับอุปสมบทเนี่ยท่านก็ยิ่งมีอารมณ์แห่งความรักคริสตานเนี่ยเพิ่มขูนขึ้น And we see Srila Prabhupada. Although Srila Prabhupada was born in a Vaishnava family, Srila Prabhupada also took initiation and had a spiritual master. So the purpose of having a spiritual master is it connects us to the disciplic succession, and that connects us to Lord Krishna. By the mercy of the spiritual master, we get the mercy of Krishna. Without the mercy of the spiritual master, then there will be havoc in spiritual life. Okay, we'll go ahead to number seven. In order to approach the platform of self-realization. One must follow the regulative principles enjoined in the revealed scriptures. So we we should understand that the regulative principles are all mentioned in the scriptures. Just like even the basic regulative principles, like being a vegetarian and not taking intoxication or gambling or illicit sex, these things are also mentioned in the scriptures. Sometimes people think, no, the, the, where does it say you have to be a vegetarian? It does say, it does say in the scriptures you should be a vegetarian. It says we should have the quality of mercy. We shouldn't be killing other animals. <laughs> The symbol of religion is in the form of the bull, and the bull stands on four legs. So in Sanskrit, generally we refer to religious principles as dharma, and dharma is the, it comes in the form of a bull, and the four legs represent the four pillars of religion. So there are four principles of religion, cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthfulness. Mercy, cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness. Have you learned them yet? Yes. Cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness. Uh, 
And then there are certain things which we have to do, like chanting Hare Krishna mantra every day. That's also mentioned in the scriptures. It's, it's the most important of all the instructions of the spiritual master to chant the holy name. And we have to do things also like wake up early in the morning. We shouldn't be lazy. We shouldn't be sleeping late in the morning. We should wake up early in the morning. And we should worship worship Lord Krishna, we should offer worship and we should also read the scriptures. So the practice of bhakti yoga requires these activities. You chant the holy name of Krishna, read books about Krishna and worship Krishna. And at the same time, we should give up all of our sinful activities. We should. We should. A brahmana is a symbol of the mode of goodness. So a devotee should also be in the mode of goodness. Number eight, one must be fixed in the tenets of the revealed scriptures. So it's important for us to read the scriptures or to hear the scriptures being read as we are doing just now. I'm reading this script, I'm reading this Ishopanishad and as I read I'm also explaining it. So it's important for people to hear this. If you don't hear the scriptures regularly, then you'll never remember Krishna. It's not enough to just chant Japa. You have to also read the scriptures. Now sometimes people become a little surprised that in the beginning we just say just chant Hare Krishna. But then we start to add other things. We see you have to read the books also. In Prabhupada's time, the devotees liked very much to go and distribute books, but they didn't read them very much. But Prabhupada always encouraged us that we must read his books regularly. And so we have a morning program when we hear the scriptures and we have an evening program when we hear the scriptures. And if we have time during the day, we will also read the scriptures. We should always take a book with us wherever we go. Number nine, 
One should completely refrain from practices which are detrimental to the interests of self-realization. So there are certain activities which will not be good for self-realization. Just like if you take intoxication, it won't help you to become self-realized. It will, it will cause you a lot of problem. And, and if we don't strictly follow the regulative principles, then we will, we will won't be able to become self-realized. So we have to follow very carefully all the instructions given to us by the spiritual teachers. Number 10. One should not accept more than he requires for the maintenance of the body. All right. We have to maintain the body, but we don't want to give the body too much. We should just try to we should try to minimize the demands of the body. Just like when it comes to eating, you have to eat to maintain the body, but don't eat too much, don't eat too little. In the same way we have to sleep, we have to get some rest. If we don't get enough rest, it won't be good. And if we get too much rest, it's also not good. So we have some, you know, guidance, Prabhupada, he said, about six or seven hours every night sleep should be enough for people. Somebody may be doing a lot of physical work, they may need to take a little more rest. And somebody may be doing a lot of mental work, that is also very tiring, they may need to get a little more rest. So everyone's an individual. Some people need to eat more and some people don't need to eat so much. And similarly, some people need to sleep a little more and some people don't need to sleep so much. And similarly, with cloth and clothing, we should have enough cloth to cover our body. Sometimes in country, some countries it's very cold in the winter time. You have to have enough cloth, you should have enough clothes to keep yourself warm, to keep yourself healthy so you don't get sick. So everybody should have to, you have we have to take care of the body and don't give it too much but don't give it too little. 
ทุกคนเนี่ยก็ต้องดูแลรักษาสุขภาพร่างกายอย่าอย่าอะไรที่มันมากเกินไปก็อย่าอะไรที่มันน้อยเกินไป Number 11. One should not falsely identify himself with the gross material body, nor should one consider those who are related to his body to be his own. ข้อ11ไม่ควรสำคัญตนเองอย่างผิดผิดกับร่างกายวัตถุที่หยาบหรือพิจารณาว่าผู้ที่สำคัญกับร่างกายนี้เป็นของเรา We identify we, in due to the material powerful due to the powerful force of the material energy. We identify ourselves with the material body. ด้วยพลังอำนาจของพลังงานวัตถุเนี่ยควบคุมเราเนี่ยทำให้เราเนี่ยคิดว่าตัวตัวเราเนี่ยร่างวัตถุนี้เนี่ยเป็นของเรา So to think I am the body is ignorance, and we have to overcome that. การคิดว่าเราเนี่ยเป็นร่างกายนี้เนี่ยอันนี้เนี่ยเป็นความคิดในระดับอวิชชาซึ่งเราจะต้องอยู่เหนือเราจะต้องเอาตัวเองขึ้นมา But the, we also there's also another type of ignorance where we identify our family members as being mine we think this is my these are my children these are my family อีกอย่างหนึ่งก็คือการที่เราเนี่ยคิดว่าบุคคลในครอบครัวเราเนี่ยเป็นของเราอย่างเช่นเวลาใครที่มีความใครที่มีความสัมพันธ์กับร่างกายนี้ของเราเนี่ยเราคิดว่าเป็นของเราแหละเช่นอันนี้เป็นลูกของเราอันนี้เป็นคนนี้ของเราอะไร So this is also ignorance we are thinking my family we think actually nothing is ours อันนี้เนี่ยก็ถือว่าเป็นความคิดในระดับความหลงที่คิดว่าอันนี้คนนี้เนี่ยเป็นลูกของฉันอันนี้เป็นครอบครัวของฉัน We come together in a family and we stay for some time and then we separate เพราะในโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยเราแค่มาอยู่ด้วยกันแค่ช่วงเวลาหนึ่งและหลังจากนั้นเราก็ต้องแยกจากกันไป Of course we develop a lot of affection and attachment for our family members แน่นอนอยู่แล้วว่าเราก็จะพัฒนาความรักและความยึดติดอย่างมากกับสมาชิกในครอบครัวของเรา But we have to understand these relationships are all temporary they don't last forever แต่เราจะต้องมีความเข้าใจด้วยว่าความสัมพันธ์เหล่านี้เนี่ยมันเป็นความสัมพันธ์ประเภทชั่วคราวเท่านั้นมันจะไม่ได้อยู่กับเราไปตลอด But we come together by the arrangement of Krishna การที่เราได้พบกันก็เนื่องจากเป็นการจัดการของพระชา So we just we have to try to be careful not to get too much affectionate for the family and for all the things in relation to the body. เพราะฉะนั้นเราต้องมีความระมัดระวังไม่ให้ตนเองเนี่ยยึดติดมากเกินไปกับครอบครัวหรือว่ายึดติดมากเกินไปกับทุกอย่างที่มีความสัมพันธ์กับร่างกายนี้ Number 12. One should always remember that as long as he has a material body, he must face the miseries of repeated birth, old age, disease, and death. There is no use in making plans to get rid of these miseries of the material body. The best course is to find out the means by which one may regain his spiritual identity. ข้อสิบสองควรระลึกไว้เสมอว่าตราบใดที่ยังมีร่างวัตถุนี้เราจะต้องพบกับความทุกข์แห่งการเกิดการเจ็บการแก่การตายซ้ำซากไม่มีประโยชน์ใดในการวางแผนที่จะขจัดความทุกข์เหล่านี้ให้ออกไปจากร่างกายวัตถุวิธีที่ดีที่สุดคือการค้นหาหนทางที่เราจะได้รับร่างทิพย์กลับคืนมา So we have to understand the nature of the material body. The material body takes birth, and the same way, one day it will die. And in course of time, it it may become old, and we will get disease, and one day we will die. และเมื่อเวลาผ่านไปเนี่ยในระหว่างก่อนที่เราจะตายเนี่ยมันก็จะมีการเจ็บปวด
มีการแกบตัวลงแล้วจุดจบของมันก็คือการตาย There's nothing we can do to avoid these things มันไม่มีวิธีการอะไรเลยที่เราจะทำเพื่อที่จะหลีกเลี่ยงสิ่งเหล่านี้ Just like we see people You know they're taking people are taking vaccines and vaccinations, but still they get sick, still they get disease, and still people die. เราสามารถเห็นได้ว่าผู้คนพยายามที่จะหลีกเลี่ยงตัวเองจากโรคภัยไข้แต่บางคนก็ไปพึ่งวัคซีนหรืออะไรอย่างนี้แต่ว่าสุดท้ายถ้าเกิดเขาเขาก็ต้องตายอยู่ดีมีไม่พอทำตาย So the most important thing, a real duty in this world. Is to make sure that we understand our spiritual identity. And we, we should like that we don't take birth in this world again. That we will go to the spiritual world after this life. เราเนี่ยจะไปรับร่างทิพย์เราจะไม่อยู่ในร่างวัตถุกับในโลกวัตถุนี้ Material world is a miserable place โลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยมันโลกที่มันเป็นโลกที่เต็มไปด้วยความทุกข์ We want to go back to be with Krishna in the spiritual sky เราเนี่ยอยากจะกลับไปหา Krishna ที่โลกทิพย์ Number thirteen one should not be attached To more than the necessities of life required for spiritual advancement. Right for for our spiritual advancement, there are certain things which we need. การพัฒนาในชีวิตทิพย์เนี่ยมันมีบางสิ่งบางอย่างอยู่ที่เราจะที่มันมีความจำเป็น We need for example we need to have scriptures we need to be able to have a nice association with senior Vaishnavas สิ่งจำเป็นก็คือเราจะต้องมีพระเวทที่ดีและเราจะต้องมีการพบหาสมาคมกับสาวกผู้อาวุโส And we need to have a temple. There should be a temple nearby. We can go and worship Krishna and see the deity. If there's no temple, at least you must have Tosi, and we can worship Tosi every day. Yeah, we should we should have a regular habit to worship Tosi every day and to circumambulate Tosi, go around Tosi regularly, circumambulate, offer obeisances and chant the holy name. So we want to make spiritual advancement. We need to have these things. It's important for us to have scriptures. We should have books which we can read regularly. Because you need your japa beads, it's very important. You need to have your japa mala. All right, number fourteen. One should not be more attached to wife, children, and home than the revealed scriptures ordain. So, a devotee is allowed to be married and have a family and have a home, and naturally, we must take care of our home and family and wife. Mm, 
to, in fact, to be married, you have to show some affection and love for your wife and for your children. You have to care for them. If you don't show the proper mood, then family life will be a big problem. If you have a wife, you have to take care of her and keep her happy and comfort her. Sometimes we get couples where the, the, the maybe the wife is a devotee and the husband's not, or maybe it's the husband's a devotee and the wife is not. Then it's quite difficult for family life. The wife wants to eat meat, or the husband wants to eat meat, and the, the other person, one wants to eat vegetarian, the other one doesn't want to be vegetarian. It's very difficult if they can't eat the meals together. So one has to have proper, one has to be careful how to keep the family together and keeping everybody happy. At the same time, internally, we have to keep the attachment to Krishna. Externally, we may show a lot of love and care, but internally, we will think that because they are part of Krishna, so I have this feeling for them. Okay, number 15. One should not be happy or distressed over desirables and undesirables, knowing that such feelings are just created by the mind. เอ่อสิโคสิโคเนี่ยบอกว่าเราไม่ควรที่จะเอ่อไอ้สิทธาเราไม่ควรที่จะมีความสุขหรือมีความทุกข์กับสิ่งปรารถนาและสิ่งไ
Number 16, Sip Hock. One should become an unalloyed devotee of the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna and serve him with rapt attention. So this is a very important point. We should all become pure devotees. And to become a pure devotee means we have to serve Krishna with real love and devotion. And we have to serve Krishna continuously, every day, every moment. Everything should be done in Krishna's service. Just like when you take prasadam, it's a service to Krishna, accepting the remnants of the food offered to Krishna. And when we lay down to take rest, to go to, to take a night's rest, we should think I'm taking rest for Krishna so that I can serve Krishna better tomorrow. So, all that you do, all that you eat, everything should be done for Krishna's pleasure. And we should be, we should want to become pure devotees. We should want to become free of all material desires. Yeah, the pure devotees have no material desires. They have desires, but not for themselves. Their desire is for Krishna. We want to serve Krishna constantly and favorably. Okay, number 17, Sibjet. One should develop a liking for residence in a secluded place with a calm and quiet atmosphere favorable for spiritual culture and one should avoid congested places where non-devotees congregate. <laughs> So association is very important. We like to get association with devotees. And it's better to avoid places where people are not devotees. We know where people are not devotees, they will speak a lot of nonsense and they will engage in all kinds of sinful activities. Right. 
So a devotee will want to live in the association of devotees. It, it, ideally, it should be a quiet place, away from all the noise and hustle and bustle. Of course, we are not always so quiet ourselves. We make a lot of noise, especially when we do kirtan. And some often we get problems from the neighbors. Although we're saying we want to live in a quiet place, if we go to a quiet place, other people will complain about us because we're so noisy. So we have to be cautious about where we live and, and think about the neighbors and not disturb them. Try to keep good relationships with the people around us. And then, finally, number 18. One should become a scientist or philosopher and conduct research into spiritual knowledge, recognizing that spiritual knowledge is permanent, whereas material knowledge ends with the death of the body. So we can see uh, this final statement that we're encouraged to uh, think deeply about the philosophy and try to understand it in terms of science and, ph and philosophy. We're, we, it's encouraged that we do research into the spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is permanent, it's eternal. But material knowledge is in relation to the body, and the body dies. So we see the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita and Ishopanishad. It's eternal knowledge. If we read it, it you can read it. It's, people have been reading it for thousands of years. And people have been benefiting from it for a very, very long time. So we've went, we've looked at these different 18 different items and we should understand that these 18 items make up a process by which we get real knowledge. So if you have any other processes, then these other processes, which are not in this category of the 18, then these other processes are just neshines, that they're not real processes of knowledge, not spiritual knowledge, they're just neshines, which is material knowledge. 
ษาความรู้ที่นอกเหนือไปจาก18ข้อนี้เนี่ยอันนั้นเนี่ยมันเป็นการหาความรู้แบบไม่ใช่แบบความรู้กิบละอันนั้นมันจะเป็นในเชิงของความรู้วัตถุเสมอกว่า So s h i l a b h a k t i v i n o t h a k u r tells us that all these different forms of material knowledge are just the 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 illusory energy. s h i l a b h a k t i v i n o t h a k u r เนี่ยท่านได้กล่าวไว้ว่าความรู้ในทางวัตถุเนี่ยบงบอกถึงมันทั้งหมดเนี่ยเป็นเพียงลักษณะภายนอกของพลังงานแห่งความหลง So if we can't try to follow the other processes, not these 18, but different from the 18, and we try to follow some other process, then that will just make us it will make us no better than an ass or a donkey. แล้วถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยพยายามพัฒนาความรู้ที่นอกเหนือไปจาก18ข้อที่ได้กล่าวมาข้างต้นเนี่ยมันก็จะเป็นการที่เราพยายามเราก็จะไม่ได้ดีไปกว่าลา In other words, we'll be a, like a stupid animal. แล้วก็หรือว่าในอีกคำแปลหนึ่งให้แปลให้ชัดๆเลยก็คือเราจะเหมือนกับสัตว์ที่งู The animal is only concerned with eating and sleeping and mating and defending. เพราะว่าสัตว์เนี่ยเขาจะมีความเขาจะมีความสนใจอยู่กับแค่สี่สิ่งก็คือการกินการนอนการร่วมเพศและการป้องกันตัว And if we cultivate this this other kind of knowledge, this nation's material knowledge, we will also become just like the animal. แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยพยายามที่จะหาความรู้ทางวัตถุหรือในรูปแบบของวัตถุเนี่ยเราก็จะไม่มีความแตกต่างไปจากสัตว์ So by material knowledge People are just becoming like animals. They just become like the foolish donkey. Ah, ah, just, ah, 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 They sometimes speak about spirituality. แต่บางครั้งเนี่ยในในโรควัตถุเนี่ยอย่างเช่นนักการเมืองหรือว่านักชาตินิยมนักวัตถุนิยมเนี่ยเขาจะพูดเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของศาสนาบ้างบางครั้ง And these politicians they may criticize the modern civilization. They say the they will say the modern civilization is demonic. แล้วก็อาจจะมีเราจะมีการต่อว่าการพัฒนาความเจริญความเจริญรุ่งเรืองในปัจจุบันเนี่ยว่าเป็นเหมือนกับเป็นเหมือนมาร But they don't know about what real knowledge is. แต่ความอับโชก็คือพวกเขาเนี่ยไม่รู้ว่าความรู้ที่แท้จริงเนี่ยมันคืออะไร They don't know what's told in the Bhagavad Gita. ว่าเขาไม่รู้ว่าในพระกวาดคิตาเนี่ยได้สอนอะไรไว้ So although they know the world is demonic, they can't do anything to change it. เขารู้ว่าโลกนี้เนี่ยมันมันกับมันเป็นโลกที่เหมือนกับมารแต่เขาก็ไม่สามารถที่จะทำอะไรหรือว่าแก้ไขอะไรได้ So in modern society, even a young man, a young man, even a boy, he thinks he's he thinks he's uh, very educated and he knows everything. And he's so proud of his modern education that he he doesn't give any respect to elderly people. So all over the world, we see young people today are giving them a, the wrong education. And they just give trouble to the older people. เพราะว่ามันทําให้เด็กเหล่านี้เนี่ยส
So we should understand there's a difference between spiritual knowledge and material knowledge. And the universities are just centers of material knowledge. And we see you, at the universities, they produce scientists, and the, these scientists just discover weapons to kill people. And the university students are never taught about how to practice brahmachari life. And they don't, they don't have any faith in the scriptures. And religious principles are only taught for just to get a big, a good name. They talk about principles of religion, but they don't do it. They don't follow any principles. And so that means that in, in some in religion, even people they couldn't care. They 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 don't think it's. They, they just don't have any any real concern about what people are doing or what people are practicing. And then some people are very attached to their country. And they think our country is the greatest country, it's better than all the other countries. And they forget that this planet Earth is just one tiny planet floating in a huge universe. And there are many, there are many, many planets all floating in many, many universes. So they, they forget how insignificant we are. So we're just like some dust, we're just like dust in the air. There's many particles of dust floating in the air. So planets are just like that. Of course, by the grace of Krishna, every planet is given everything they need for their maintenance. We're given everything we need to provide for us. So some people may go in the spaceship and they may feel very proud that they're able to go up into the air and fly. But 
but we should understand we're very small and there, there's big planets floating in space. We're just, they're just one tiny little airplane going in the, in, the, in the space. But there are many planets all floating in space. And there are many, many planets all floating in the uni each in so many universes. So we're, we're very small and insignificant, but we're thinking, I am the controller. We're thinking, I'm in charge. So because of this illusion, we take birth and die again and again in different species of life. Some you know, people are supposed to live about a hundred years, but gradually the duration of life is reduced and it will go on reducing until it comes to about 20 or 30 years and you're old man. If you're 30 years old, you're a very old man. And we have divided each planet into so many different countries just so that we can have our own sense gratification. Hare Krishna, did you hear that? Yeah? Uh, Guru Maharaj, can you repeat that again? Many planets, something you said? I said that no, we divide the planet into different countries just so oh. that we can enjoy our own sense gratification. Uh, yeah, we're only here for a short time. We stay in the world for a short time, but we want to try to make our perfect arrangement here on this planet. And so this way, there's always tension between one country and another. And whatever money the country has, they will spend half the money to build bombs and to buy airplanes and to, to try to maintain their army to protect themselves. So nobody worries about spiritual knowledge, but still people are so proud that we're very advanced. Okay, we will stop there. Okay. Are there any questions? Uh, I 
แก้มาดีค่ะเจอเลยค่ะฮาริกิชันคุรุมาราชดาวาพระนามพรีเซ็กซ์เซ็ปเมฮัมบูออฟิซิสโอคอริทูสิลาปะปุปาน Um, so I need you to explain more about main idea of Sanatana Dharma, Guru Maharaj. Well, Sanatana Dharma means eternal religion. Sanatana Dharma, เนี่ยหมายถึงศาสนานิรันดร Right. We may identify ourselves. We may say, "I'm a Buddhist." Or I'm a Hindu, or I'm a Christian, or whatever. This is not real religion. This is only your belief or your faith. And that faith can change. You can change your faith. Just like sometimes, you know, sometimes maybe you get married to a man of another religion, and so he said, "Okay, now you have to come to my religion." If you marry somebody who is a Christian and you're not a Christian, you see, you have to become a Christian so we can get married in the church. I knew one lady. There was one lady. She was a, she was a, a Catholic, but the Catholic Church did not allow abortion. So she she didn't want to have another baby, and she wanted to have an abortion. So she gave up the Catholic Church and she went to another church where she could have abortion. So people. They ch they change their faith according to their needs, according to their material desires. So, so when we say you know your your religion and you say Buddha or you say Christian or whatever, this is not real religion. This is your faith. And your faith can change, but your religion never changes. It's eternal. So what is religion? Your real religion is to be a servant of God. We say a living entity is eternally a servant of God. It's a constitutional position. It means it never changes. Your our position is always to be the servant of God. We cannot become God, but we can become servant of God. So that is real Sanatana Dharma, to understand God is the master and I am His servant eternally.
Do you understand now what is Sanatana Dharma? Adam, I don't understand about uh, about Hinduism people. They said they are follow Sanatana Dharma, but um, nowadays they didn't understand about devotion, devotional service by servant of God. Um, can you explain more about that? No, can you tell me again what you're saying? So she been trying to say that um, the nowadays the people who in in Hinduism they say they are Sanatan Dharma, but they don't have any idea about uh, being the servant of the Lord. Yeah, so like that they say they're Sanatan Dharma. They don't know what is Sanatan Dharma. They don't understand what is Sanatana Dharma. They never, they never studied. They just say, I'm Sanatana Dharma. They don't know. Just like people say, I'm a Buddha. I'm a Buddhist. They don't know what is Buddhism. But they say, I'm a Buddhist. So people say, I'm Sanatana Dharma. They don't know what is Sanatana Dharma. They never read any scripture. They never heard from the Guru. They never went to hear from the teacher. They never asked what is Sanatana Dharma. อันนั้นเค้าพูดเนื่องจากความเข้าใจผิดของเขาเค้าเนี่ยอ้างตนเองว่าเป็นสนาตันดาร์มาเป็นอย่างงี้แต่ว่าความจริงเค้าไม่เ
So don't disturb them. You don't need to disturb them. But you should understand what is the truth. So about um, this mean at the past time, like I mean, um, Kiwaresh Yuga, this mean um, everybody follows Sanatan Dharma, but um, is I mean it's changed because um, Kali Yuga something like that, Kumaras. Ajana, Kumaras, you understand? Not exactly, no. Ah, uh, she said in uh, previously, so before Kali Yuga arrived, everyone be following Sanatan Dharma only. It's only because of the Kali Yuga we have so many religions like this. Oh, well, before the Kali Yuga, everybody followed Sanatan Dharma. Is that right? Yes. Well, there were other, other, there were there was also impersonalism. Ah, uh, come here, uh, yeah. You see, there's different, different teachings, different times, you know, like uh, before the Kali Yuga, well, there's been many different people coming, teaching, different people come, give different teachings, that's been going on. Generally. But generally, before the Kali Yuga, people were more pious. That they, they would follow some of the principles. They would follow better than people do today. We had Lord Rama come, Lord Rama came in the Treta Yuga, and then Lord Krishna came at the end of the Dwapara Yuga. So, you know, that was very good. In, in different ages there are different processes, you see. The, in, the, in the Satya Yuga people would do meditation, and so they would sit to, to meditate for a long time. And then in the Treta Yuga, people were doing fire sacrifices, and Lord Rama was also doing fire sacrifices. Uh, and then in Dwapara Yuga, the age before the Kali Yuga, people were doing temple worship. So there are many temples, indeed, temples have been around for a long time. Not all new temples. Some temples are very old. But in Kali Yuga, the process is mainly the chanting of the holy name. It said in the Kali Yuga, there's no other way but to chant the holy name. So Sanatana, 
Sanatan Dharma is, you know, is going to be different in different ages. It's not the same in every age. อาจารย์อ่าไปให้พี่ดีกว่าพี่ว่าคําถามมันยากมากเลยเออเหมือนกับว่าพี่อยากจะรู้ว่าเหมือนกับว่าเอ่อทําไมเหมือนคนอินด
พราะว่าเขาเขาต้องการเปลี่ยนแปลงแต่ของเราเนี่ยเราไม่เปลี่ยนเพราะเรามีกุรุปรมราชถูกไหมใช่ค่ะโอเคโอเคคุณมหาราช I understand now okay okay thank you คุณมหาราช for you explain Hare Krishna Hare Krishna You a t i s a c h i m a t e j i has a question. Yes, Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Lanka Pada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, if uh, the person uh, performs uh, very uh, strict, uh, too difficult, uh, too severe austerities, uh, which are not necessary, uh, is it uh, the mood of passion? Yes. คำถามก็คือถ้าเกิดว่าบุคคลเนี่ยปฏิบัติความสมถะมากเกินไปแบบไม่มีความจำเป็นเนี่ยอันนั้นถือว่าอยู่ในระดับตัณหาหรือไม่ใช่ไม่มาแล้วค่ะถูกต้อง Yes it's a mode of passion that may even be the mode of ignorance เออมันเป็นระดับตัณหาหรือว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยมันก็จะไปอยู่ในระดับอวิชชาเลยก็ว่าได้ It can torture your body as a mode of ignorance. การทำร้ายร่างกายแบบนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นระดับอวิชชาก็เป็นไง That's described in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 16 or 17. Okay, maybe 17. But it's a mode of ignorance, mode of passion, and the mode of ignorance. To torture the body, to abuse the body, to try to do more uh, great austerities, great fat, a lot of fasting. It's not good. It's not recommended. The body belongs to Krishna, given to us by Krishna. We should take care of it. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati used to do. Full fasting on a kadasi, near jail fasting. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur told him, he said, "This is not necessary in the Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, you don't have to do all this kind of austerity." And so Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati he stopped doing full fasting, and he he would take fruits in the afternoon. He would take a plate of fruits in the afternoon, but he wouldn't do. He stopped the full fasting. Because Bhakti b i n o d Thakur told him, "This is not right. This is not good." Hmm. So, then, the p r a c i s t i c e of a fast is not to do it in the way that it will cause pain to the body or to the body. Because the method of fasting is not recommended for this Kali Yuga. It gives an example of the Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati. At the beginning, the person will fast. ถือสินวันในกระเดอสีแบบว่าไม่ไม่รับประทานน้ำด้วยสรีนี้คุณพ่อเนี่ยบอกตีวินาทาคุณท่านจะบอกว่าวิธีการแบบนี้เนี่ยไม่ได้มาไม่ได้มีไว้สําหรับการปฏิบัติในกะลียุคแล้วหลังนั้นเนี่ยท่านก็เลยปรับเปลี่ยนวิธีใหม่คือในช่วงตอนเย็นเนี่ยท่านจะรับประทานผลไม้อะไรกันนะ Yes okay Yes. Any other questions? Vaishnavi Madhuji. Vaishnavi Madhuji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Lakshmi. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I went to a wedding ceremony, and uh, they have the many rule uh, rituals for uh, three four hours, and there was a ritual also like this. Uh, the boy is going to Kasi for spiritual advancement and. Um, Uh, the father of the girl comes and stops him, and he says uh, he's give, going to give his uh, daughter to him. Like that, so many rituals, uh, Guru Maharaj. And uh, even the priest uh, just uh, told me uh, in a lower note that uh, chanting Hare Krishna is very easy, but our culture has uh, more uh, rituals, uh, rules, and rituals. I was wondering uh, uh, whether uh, in Kali Yuga, this all these rituals. Uh, And uh, in the marriage ceremony, is it uh, good or uh, uh, how how devotee should take it and like that, Guru Maharaj? Well, <laughs> there's um, so many rituals. Maybe there these rituals and what can we say? I mean, it, different people 
They have different traditions, different tastes. Some people want to do the marriage very simply, and for other people it will be very complex. They want to do the full thing. Sometimes the marriage ceremony will go on for three days or more. So, three, four hours, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, the main ceremony, Guru Maharaj, but actually it went for two days, as you said. Mm -hmm. They yeah. also have, a, sometimes they, nowadays marriages, I see, they also have a Bollywood dance program in the evening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything is so westernized now, degraded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, and it, at, least, at least they get married, at least they still get married, you know. A lot of places in the West now, people don't even bother to marry, you know, they just come and live together <laughs> for some time. They don't even marry, it's good they marry, you know. But the problem nowadays, people don't even want to marry, they just want to live together and when they get tired of each other, then they separate. So yeah. marriage has become like that, that people don't even w want to marry. They want, they say, oh, it's just a waste of money. We spend so much money on the wedding ceremony and night. They don't even want to do that. So it, it, yes, at least there's some much. culture there. At least they have the marriage, you know. Yeah, definitely it's a lot of money, Guru Maharaj. Even at least 25 to 30 lakhs, even this marriage. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of money, big money, yeah. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, dip, you are saying it depends upon each one's mood, right? Some people want more rituals like that. Yeah. Okay. Some people, are, some people are prepared financially and some people, they can't, of course, they can't come up with that kind of money. Not so easy, not for everyone. Yes, Guru Maharaj. But the devotees can also have marriage ceremony, right, Guru Maharaj? With kirtan and everything, like. Uh, oh, yeah. They also. Yeah, we do. Yeah, devotees have kirtan, they have marriages. Yeah. And everything is done in uh, Vaishnava way. For the pleasure of Krishna. Krishna and for the pleasure of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay. We do them. We often do marriages in temples, like in in London. At the Bhaktivedanta Manor, they do marriages there. People come there for their marriage. And we see also in, in India, in Mumbai, at the Juhu Temple, they have a lot of marriage halls there. People come there and have their marriages, and it's common. Mm. Devotees, uh, temples, many of our temples in India, at least, they maintain by performing marriages. You know, because they, they can charge people and they come to the, the, at the temple, they'll have the marriage and they'll have the prasadam and everything, all the catering will be done by the temple. So it generates some income for the temple to help to maintain the temple. And so, uh, sometimes also devotees will, they will do the, they will be the priests and they'll do the marriages and it's recognized as an official marriage. In Calcutta also, in Calcutta, in cities like that, you know, more in cities, marriages are common. So the temple, our temples are often used for that. It's a common service. It's a service which we do for the community. That's important. Our temples are meant to do different samskars. So samskars, you know, begin like Garbhadan samskar, and then the, 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 at the time of the birth of the child, there's a samskar, and then there's the anaprashna samskar, 
and then there's a cutting of the hair with some scar, and then there's another one where the child begins education to write letters, and then there's another samskar when he uh, gets married, it's one of the samskars. And then when he leaves the body, end of life, that's the last. <laughs> that's it. But these samskars are all good they're for purifying the soul. So marriage is one of the samskars. It's a, you know, a religious ceremony. The Lord Krishna personally, when he married 16,100 queens, you know, the 16,100 queens who were all prisoners by Narakasura, Lord Krishna killed Narakasura and, and then he accepted all the 16,100 princesses as his wives and he performed a separate marriage ceremony with each of the queens. So there were 16,100 marriages all going on simultaneously and Lord Krishna was in each of them. And so marriage is an, it's an important part of very, in every culture. Marriage is very important for civilized people, right? Animals, they don't have marriages. But human society, we need marriage. It's supposed to be there. It's a part of a religious society. So it's good for people to be married. If people don't marry, then it's just animal civilization. And that's the modern trend. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so we, we try to educate people about the importance of some scars. That, it, that it's very good for the soul. You want quality when you want a child, you want to have a quality child, a good quality child. So you get quality children by performing samskar. You do a samskar, you do the garbhadan samskar, and you can attract a pure soul into the womb. Should we devotees also follow the samskars, Guru Maharaj? Oh yes, yeah. Garbhada, okay. But we don't do the sacred thread samskar, right, Guru Maharaj? No, we do. Sacred thread, we do. That's a second initiation. The second initiation is the sacred thread. Only for men, not for women, of course. Women don't get sacred thread, but for men. Okay. Okay, Guru Maharaj, because I see they are doing uh, as a small uh, child, a uh, boy child, as in five or six years old, like that in uh, South India. They are uh, offering him a sacred th thread and they are, uh, every day he has to tell Gayatri Mantra three times like that. Yeah. Well, six years old, that's a bit young, you know, and it shouldn't be so young. They're doing Upanayana. We have, we have it in Iskon. One should be first, first we have initiate people into Harinam and after they're chanting Harinam and they're fixed in the four regulated principles, they follow strictly and chant every day and they have good, good uh, practice, then they get the second initiation. His Holiness Jaipataka Swami Maharaj just wrote a letter and he was saying he has many disciples and not every, not all of them have got second initiation. Many of them need to get second initiation. So he told them that before they get second initiation, they have to do the Bhakti Shastri and they have to complete the Bhakti Shastri course to study the scriptures and that would qualify them for the second initiation. Mm -hmm. So many devotees are doing Bhakti Shastri, it's very good for them to learn the philosophy. Because if they don't know the philosophy, then they, and they, they, then they won't chant Gayatri Mantra, they, they won't be doing chanting. If they're not reading regularly, they're not studying, it will be 
there is no point for them to have the Brahman initiation. So they have to study regular. They have to be reading. And they have to be studying the philosophy and and applying it also. And then they then they're worthy to get the second initiation. But but what you're describing, that's just that's just some upanayana. They're giving the upanayana. Oh. They're giving it to yes, they're giving it to people. Upanayana. Yeah, they're giving it to people, you know. Often they give it to people by birth, you know, if they're born in the Brahmana family, Jati Brahman, you know, like that. The higher caste, the Brahman, the Kshatri, the Vaishya, they get the Upanayana Sutra, they won't get it. But yeah. Brahman, Kshatri, Vaishya, they can get Upanayana. And they, you know, for a few days they follow, maybe vegetarian for a few days, <laughs> and they give them yes. the Upanayana. And you know, you know, six year old boy, what can even ten year old boy, you know, they give them the thread, they don't teach them hardly anything. They don't know anything. Yeah, they they don't uh, yeah, follow it Guru Maharaj. Yeah. So it's a waste of time. But we try to train people, educate people so they follow, they'll do it throughout their life. Does they get more sins if they don't follow? Is it like that or just uh, not nothing more. Just, yeah, no benefit. I mean, they're going to be, if they're not following that, then the, what they're going to be doing? They're going to be attracted to sinful life. They take up more material activities, sense gratification. They don't have an interest. They don't, they don't understand the importance of spiritual culture. So we try to train people, try to educate them. Then they'll do regularly. No, so somebody, they wear a sacred thread and they eat meat and everything, it's very bad. It's not good. Give people the wrong impression. Just like Tanmoy. Tanmoy said on Saturday, somebody had a guru, but he's not vegetarian. Right? So you get that yes. kind of thing. He's a, he has a guru, he's his guru, but he's not vegetarian, not even vegetarian. So, useless. Just make a show. Oh, I have a guru. No, I eat everything. <laughs> okay. So, thank, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Arjuna, for all your translation. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki. Go back to, go back to Brindis. Oh, Jolene, did you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, all glories uh, to Srila Prabhupada. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Guru Maharaj, when you say that um, if they accept initiation but they don't follow uh, the instructions, would they uh, be committing Guru Aparat? Yes. And and this would be of a worse if worse effect, right? Oh, yeah, it's not going to help them. All right. That explains. Thank you. Yeah. The guru, however, can forgive them if they, you know, the. You see, if they surrender to the Guru, the Guru gives them instructions and they should follow. But then at, the, at some point they may decide, well, I don't want to follow, I don't want the Guru anymore. So they give up the relationship. So if they give up the relationship, okay, then the Guru says, all right, then you go. You're independent. You're, I, don't, I don't have to take care of you anymore. And so the Guru will just wash his hands of them because he's not following anything. So he doesn't worry about it. But if somebody says, no, you're my guru, I still want to keep you as my guru, then you have to follow. If you say, I'm, if you're accepting me as your guru and you're not following, then it's not good. But if you say, no, I don't want guru anymore, I, finish, I, don't, I, I'm, I can't do it, I can't follow, I don't want guru, you give up the relationship, all right. That's a different thing. 
But if you still want the guru, you still want to pretend to be a devotee, but you're not following, then it's not good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hare, yes, I understand. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Go back to Vrinda ki.